So Mid Journey V4 uh, dropped very recently. And if you're anything like me, the first question you asked yourself was like, how the, how the hell did they do that? What, what is going on back there? And so I was like, okay, I'm gonna find out. If the answer's out there, I'm gonna find it. That's what's gonna happen. That's, what's, that's what we're doing. And I've got some bad news. Bad news basically is that they officially have made a statement and the statement says, we ain't telling you. <laughs> That's our knowledge, that's our information, it's probably really vital to our commercial well-being, and we're not going to tell you. But I did find out two interesting little details. The first, and this is kind of obvious and expected, is that they are using some form or fashion of a diffusion model, because that's basically what people are using to get similar results elsewhere, and more importantly, if you generate an image with mid-journey, you can see it slowly forming in this iterative process, which is exactly what the stable diffusion uh, process looks like. So basically they're using a latent diffusion model as opposed to like a GAN or something, right? Because with a GAN, it's like a one step pow. So, you know, we know that. Okay, sure, whatever. You know, that was kind of expected. That's not, that's not blowing your brains out at this stage. This was the really interesting thing I found, which is that they're sort of the first company or I guess one of the bigger companies to use user feedback in their text to image models. Okay, so Midjourney, as well as having a Discord server, also has a web app. And basically you need to pay to use the web app. And one of the things you can do on the web app is rank other people's images. Now, Midjourney actually has gone through like four iterations so far. And in an interview with David Hulse, like one of the, one of the two interviews that seem to exist, in the interview, David Hulse was like, yeah, you know, the only difference between V2 and V3 was that we integrated user feedback into the training process of V3. We didn't even add any more images. And in his opinion, V3 was much better than V2. There's this really nice website you can go to compare V3 and V2 of Mid Journey. I don't actually think the step up was like huge, but it was certainly something. It was certainly significant. So apparently just adding user feedback through some complicated mechanism, they were able to get you know, significantly, noticeably better results. And I would say that they are noticeably better, but you know, you can be the judge. He didn't specify exactly what kind of user feedback was integrated. Originally, I thought that because when you generate an image with mid-journey, you generate like four images and then you can choose to upscale one or some of them or variate on one or some of them. Um, I assumed that the feedback was just like the ones that users chose to iterate on because, you know, inherently users are obviously preferring those images. I assume that was the feedback. But he does use the term user rankings and a user ranking site launched like two months before the first alpha testing of V3. Made a fun timeline if you want to see the fun timeline. Um, so it was probably just user rankings, I suppose. But to me, the other kind of feedback, that sort of implicit preferring of one of four images also seems like it could be helpful. And Midjourney did like a similar thing for V4. While they were training V4, they had these two ranking rounds where they were sort of rewarding people for ranking. And the first round went for like two months. So presumably they generated like a whole bunch of rankings. And then the second round went for like four days near the end. Now it's difficult to say how important those ranking rounds were, but holds seemed to put a lot of weight on the, the first time they did rankings for V3. He seemed to think that was really important. So presumably user feedback is a big part of the reason why Midjourney V4 kicks the, the amount of ass that it does in fact kick. If image generation networks really benefit from user feedback, at the moment Midjourney might have a pretty big advantage over its competitors like say Stable Diffusion or possibly Dali. The Midjourney community is a lot more centralized and it also looks a lot larger. So I've got some numbers for you. If you're like a numbers kind of gal, uh, comparing the two communities, Stable Diffusion versus Midjourney. You'll see that there's basically like one outlier here, which is the Midjourney Discord community, which is a behemoth of a community. Like 4 million, what's, what's the deal with that? Why are there 4 million people on their Discord? Well, basically because the only way to use Midjourney for a long time was through their Discord. So you had to join the Discord. And I think that could have been a bloody masterstroke because firstly, it meant that all the images you had to generate were like public. So, you know, you, you weren't really comfortable 
generating bear, 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 thighs, 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 burly man, thick man, big beard, <laughs> and all that kind of stuff. So it kept the community nice and sort of like PG. So just based on those numbers, I think it's kind of safe to say that the kind of clout that Mid Journey has, um, the kind of reach that the, the company has versus Stability AI itself, right? the company as opposed to the model, Stable Diffusion, is probably a lot larger because they have this huge base of people who are actually directly interacting with them. There might be thousands and thousands of people generating Stable Diffusion images and posting them everywhere, but the number of them that are actually going to Stability AI and using their product or going onto their Discord and, and having conversations, um, it looks like it's a lot less than the people who are interacting directly with the mid-journey company and actually sending requests to the mid-journey service. And if like user feedback is some important thing, then that could be a big deal going forward. There's also another thing, which is the stable diffusion community is kind of getting a little bit seedy as time goes on, which we knew was going to happen. You know, you, you give someone the ability to generate infinite waifu and like, it's only going to be a matter of time until that happens. So that being the case, um, the fact that Midjourney has this centralized control over their community and they can sort of enforce this PG-13 kind of vibe, um, maybe that'll be really important in the long run because it'll attract a very different kind of person to the Midjourney community. So I don't know if that's important. I think it'd be really interesting to do some kind of a sentiment analysis on the Midjourney Discord versus the Stable Diffusion Discord and see like, you know, are people being positive on both servers? Are people being sketched on both servers? Like what's the go? And that could probably give you some important information about how these communities are gonna develop in the future. Again, the point is that mid journey is a bit more centralized. So they have the ability to enforce these like strictures upon their community and be like, no, don't do that stuff. Okay, all of that said, even in this scenario that I'm kind of alluding to where in the future, Midjourney is able to leverage its community to get a lot more feedback and then train better models off that feedback. Um, even in that scenario, it may not be important. Because like, at the end of the day, there are sort of two fallbacks you have if you're an AI company that doesn't have a big community. The first is that money is a thing. Stable Diffusion just got $101 million of funding. They just snuck that little one in there. Just cheeky, just a little cheeky one for EMAD. Um, and if you if you pay $2 million on Amazon Mechanical Turk, you can get uh, 100 million image rankings. So if Stability AI, like, they lost their community entirely, you know, finally, they decide to kick out automatic 11.11 and everyone just, <laughs> just breaks off. Even in that case, they can just be like, okay, cool. Uh, we'll just hire some Mechanical Turk people to do whatever kind of annotations that we want and we'll be fine. So that's all well and good. And then the other kind of funnier um, thing to me is that as long as there's someone else out there who has a good image generation model, you, <laughs> you can kind of build one <laughs> yourself. There was someone in the Discord who was posting these like really sick pictures. I think they were up on the community post board or whatever. And I was like, those pictures are so good. What's going on? How did you make them? And he was like, yeah, man, I just took some, some images from Mid Journey, fed them into Stable Diffusion with Dream Booth, and boom, I've basically got my own Mid Journey. So that's kind of a fun meme -y thing you can do. Like, as long as a model is out there, you can kind of train another model to match that model. Like, that's kind of how our models work. Uh, okay, so let's just summarize. Let's summarize this one up. Mid journey, how does it work? We don't know. They're not telling us, but it is a diffusion model. It looks like they incorporate user feedback into it. Um, they seem to be leveraging their community to like the greatest extent possible. And they might have the most powerful community at the moment because it's so big and they have so much centralized control over it. Uh, but whether or not a big community will matter in the long run remains to be seen because you can do a bunch of cheeky things with AI that don't require a community. Now, if I happen to be wrong about anything, despite all the research I did, then I'll be sad, but please also tell me about it in the YouTube comments or the Discord. One of those two, because being wrong is, being wrong makes me even more sad in the long run. Very soon, I'm gonna do another video about how you can use Dream Booth to just train your own mid journey. 
um and that way you you don't have to pay them you don't have to you don't have to pay any credits so stick around for that one hit the bell i don't know how youtube works but find a way to stick around for that one because that's that's gonna be fun